Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm gonna to show you how I did this half rainbow, half black tumbler design that was inspired by this photo right here. My friend Julie Rose submitted this idea in our Flynn Sisters exclusives group for our You Call It's Challenge where the members of our private group can submit ideas that they wanna see me make live. And if I pick your idea, not only will we make it live, but they get to keep the cup as a prize as well. It's a super fun challenge that we've been doing all month in that group. And I've had so much fun and so much inspiration coming out of these ideas. And this was a fantastic one. So thank you, Julie, for your idea. When I was showing little teasers of this Tumblr online, so many of you had asked for a tutorial. So that's what we're doing today. I hope you guys enjoy this video. That's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. Right, you guys so as usual we're starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup I've already taped off the bottom of my tumbler if you want more information as to how or why I would tape off the bottom of my cup and not finish the bottom I will list a video down below in the description box that I think you'll find really helpful we're only using three colors for the base paint on our rainbow ombre we're gonna be using red yellow and blue this ombre doesn't have to be perfect, but I will say that I think part of the secret to getting a good glitter ombre is starting with a solid painted base. Once my paint was dry to the touch, I'm ready to apply my glitter. I'm using epoxy as the adhesive for my glitter today, but before I spread on that epoxy, I want to warm my cup up a little bit. The trick to doing epoxy method is having a very, very thin and even coat of epoxy resin. And it's easier to do that when my cup is warm to the touch. During the winter time, my cups are freezing cold in my shop. Uh, it makes it very, very hard to spread that on smoothly. So just warming it up really quick with the torch, it's gonna help that epoxy glide on like butter. Once we have that epoxy nice and smooth, we're gonna start applying our glitter. I'm using a whole rainbow of colors <laughs> from Maestra Creations Glitter. I'm gonna have them all listed down below in the description box, but we're starting with the bottom color first. This is Purple Diamonds, and the trick to doing a rainbow gradient like this is we're not gonna angle our cup. Normally when we're doing an ombre, we want to have a steep angle to get a wide gradient of color. With this, we're keeping the cup mostly straight and I'm just sprinkling from high up from the cup, at least 18 inches up from the cup, we're just sprinkling very, very lightly. It's super important to have good control of your glitter shaker while you're doing this so you don't accidentally pour on too much at one time. We can always add more, but we can't take away. So what I'm doing right now is establishing kind of a rough draft for my glitter placement, paying attention to how much space I have for each color and trying to divide that space equally amongst, I think, all seven colors that I'm using. The base paint that we applied earlier is kind of my guide for breaking up those colors. So that purple and the blue and part of that darker green will be in the blue section. The lighter green that I'm using here, which is kind of a holographic lime green, will help in the yellow section to transition between that yellow to the darker green. And then the yellow that I'm using is a iridescent, it has some iridescent pieces, whereas all the other colors I'm using are very metallic. So you'll see later how I use a kind of iridescent orange to bridge the gap between that yellow and the red. And I purposely chose a red that was more on the orange side so that it would almost act as my orange and help blend that tr transition a little better. I hope that all makes sense. So again, you're going to see me just very, very lightly sprinkling on each color, blending into the next as I go. We're not aiming for full coverage yet, okay? We're just very, very lightly sprinkling. 
So once I've got all my colors applied in this like rough draft kind of way, I tapped off the excess glitter into my trash can so I don't contaminate anything. And now I'm going back up and building the coverage through all the colors, starting with the lighter colors first, really kind of letting it rip in those sections. And then moving on to the next color again, building up that coverage. The goal when we do epoxy method glitter is that we can see the texture of the glitter. That's when we know we've applied enough. Once I've built up the coverage amongst all my colors, again, I tapped off the excess into the trash can. And then I'm going to promptly remove the tape that I had along the bottom so that it doesn't dry with that epoxy that we applied for our adhesive. And I'm gonna let this sit on my rack to dry for at least three hours before we move on to the next step. Your dry time may vary based on the brand and type of epoxy that you used to apply your glitter. Once that was dry, I did spray seal it with Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss spray paint, just a solid you know, spray coat. Um, and I did let that dry for at least a half hour before I applied my first coat of epoxy. We actually did three coats of epoxy until smooth before we got to this step, which you're watching me do right now. I'm sorry guys that I didn't film those initial epoxy layers. I forgot, my bad. <laughs> All right, and I'm doing my normal sanding routine. We're sanding along the top rim to expose a fine line of stainless steel. This is where our final coats of epoxy will adhere to to create the final seal for our tumbler on the very top outer rim rather than the very top inner rim where it's more vulnerable. I'm also gonna sand the sides to knock down any kind of pokey bits. And because we are painting over part of this with some spray paint, we're gonna sand down that top rim more than we normally will. And you'll see why in the video later. Now this is a half and half design, so I need to split the half of my cup. I'm gonna do so by lining up my tape with the half seams on the lid that comes with my tumbler. So you saw a second ago how that lid has a seam if you look really carefully along the side. I'm gonna line up the top of my tape with that seam and kind of eyeball down the center using my line tool from the Amy's Make Everything to make sure that that's indeed a straight line. I might have to adjust my tape here and there. If you're unsure about adjusting your tape, you can use that line tool actually to draw a straight line down the side of your cup. However, this is a curvy traditional tapered cup, so I'm gonna have a hard time using that line tool to draw down the side. That's why I'm just kind of adjusting my tape and lining it up with the center line of my line tool. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side again using the seam of my lid to determine the full half and this is the quickest and easiest way in my opinion to get a true center line down the half of your cup. Once you have that half line <laughs> marked out with your masking tape, we'll tape off the remainder of that one half of our tumbler. And then we're gonna apply our vinyl for our stenciling that will peekaboo through the black half of our tumbler. If you're taping off your bottom rim like I did, don't forget to tape off your stainless steel section down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to apply my decal that we're using as the stenciling for our peekaboo section on the black half. This is kind of emotionless. This is Serona font. I cut this using my Cricut uh, with just regular permanent vinyl. If you prefer to use stenciling vinyl because that's easier for you, then go on right ahead. And I'm going to apply a quarter inch with masking tape just to help me line up my decal in the positioning that I want it to be for the black half. And I'm gonna apply this decal like I normally would using the hinge method and measuring twice so I only have to cut once. And then I'm gonna apply a little uh, leopard print detailing next to the decal here uh, and I'm hand placing those spots. Those are just some spots I had left over from a different project. I will link the file that I used for those leopard spots in the description box. Once I was done applying all my stenciling vinyl, we spray painted this black using just a flat black spray paint. 
And it's always best to do two light coats than one heavy coat and risk having to deal with any kind of drips, particularly after you've placed all of your stenciling vinyl and done all that work. We don't want to mess it up. So I just did two very light coats, dried really nicely. As soon as this was dried to the touch, I removed all the tape and the stenciling vinyl. If there's any little parts where your paint might have bled through your tape line, I just use a Q-tip with some acetone to clean that up really quick. To remove my stenciling vinyl, I like to just use a X-Acto knife to kind of pull up the side and then very carefully peel off the vinyl. If you find that your vinyl is leaving a good amount of residue over your epoxied surface, it could be a number of reasons. Typically, I find that I get the most residue left when my epoxy hasn't fully cured yet or I didn't sand and buff out the surface prior to applying my paint. What happens with adhesive vinyl and not fully cured epoxy is it almost has like a chemical reaction and it'll leave that residue. Um, and again, if you know, stenciling vinyl shouldn't do that to you. So if you have an easier time with stenciling vinyl, you can use that. I will link one down in the description box that I think would be good. Remember earlier when we sanded our top rim to create the seal for our final coats? Well, we just painted over that exposed <laughs> stainless steel section. So we have to remove a little bit of the paint. That's why I told you guys to really sand down further than you normally would on that top rim so that when we go to remove a little bit of the paint, we don't expose any of our glitter. So I've got a paper towel here with some acetone. You can also use rubbing alcohol and I'm just gonna remove a little bit of that paint and hopefully if we sand it down enough on the front end, we won't see any glitter poking through where we're not supposed to. Now I'm gonna apply a little quarter inch piece of masking tape on the center line to help me line up my decal on this opposite side. This opposite side decal says kind of emotional in the same font. I think I put emotional in breathing font though. I used a different font for the emotional word. And I'm applying this decal like I normally would using the hinge method. Only this time I used a little bit of masking tape to help me hinge it because I couldn't put a big overlap of transfer tape without risking damaging that paint there on the other side. I'm gonna apply hand apply some more leopard spots as a fun detail. I wanted it to kind of look like a bit of a swirl that extends from the black half into the rainbow half just for some added interest and whimsy, I guess. <laughs> it needed something. So my answer is always just add leopard spots. <laughs> But that's it for this design. Super fun. I love the impact of the black versus the bright rainbow. So beautiful and dramatic. I absolutely loved it. We're ready to apply our final coats. I was able to get a true final coat with just one coat over this paint. I am using my own Flynn Sisters Premium Epoxy Resin, which just restocked. So find the link to purchase it in the description box. And I am not taping off off the very bottom for these final coats um, because after I apply my epoxy I'm just going to wipe up any excess from where it's not supposed to be and it works out just fine. Again you guys if you want to know why or how I'm not finishing the bottom of my tumblers I will link a tutorial down below that'll explain exactly how to do that. But that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I absolutely love this design and how it came together. Let me know what you thought in the comments and if you like this video please be sure to give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.